now, as we all know. Rishi Sunak has promised repeatedly to stop the boats. So, how's it all going? Well, an incredible 838 illegal migrants arrived in just four days this week. And the surge in illegal arrivals caused the government to announce a migrant emergency in the channel. Well, I'm joined now by our home and security editor, Mark White. Mark, always a pleasure to have you on the show. A migrant emergency, one that's going to take over four weeks to solve. It's, it's fair to say, Mark, it's been an utterly disastrous week for the government. Yeah, it's a strange one in that the government yesterday decided to declare this a migrant emergency, but then at the same time told us that it would be the 18th of April before this Rwanda bill received royal assent. They do have time available to them before then, but for some reason, despite this being an emergency, we're waiting until the 18th of April, and then it's going to be, we're told, at least June before any flights to Rwanda take off. We had reports in the Times this morning suggesting that the government has yet to finalise any kind of a deal with an aviation company who would be prepared to take those asylum seekers across to Rwanda. In response, we have had a statement from the Home Office today saying that we have robust operational plans in place for flights uh, following discussions with a range of commercial companies. And they go on to say uh, that they are all departments working across Whitehall uh, towards ensuring that these flights leave for Rwanda as soon as possible. I think really uh, in that statement, there is nothing that knocks down the Times story, no confirmation that they actually have come up with a deal to be able to fly these asylum seekers to the East African country. And in the absence of that, we understand that there are discussions to try to persuade the RAF to pick up the slack here. Now, understandably, the Royal Air Force just doesn't want to get involved with this controversial process. And not just because it's controversial and potentially a security risk, they don't have the aircraft available to do this. It would be likely the Voyager aircraft that they have which can be used as a passenger aircraft, but it also doubles as a tanker aircraft, and it's used to support the fast jet fleet. And what's been happening in recent months? Well, they've been involved in supporting the fast jet fleet out of Cyprus to bomb the Houthi rebels. They really don't have the capacity available uh, to them in the RAF to start uh, using these aircraft as a shuttle service for asylum seekers going off to Rwanda. And it's almost a metaphor for the incompetence of what this this scheme has become, Mark. The MOD don't want to get involved and private charter companies don't want to get involved either for fear of reputational damage. And yet none of this, Mark, seems to have been thought through. What kind of immigration plan, um, deportation plan uh, that involves planes, involves a government that hasn't managed to get any planes lined up? Well, as yet, it doesn't seem that they have got that agreement in place, um, but they are confident. They say that they will have the plans in place when it com comes to the time that they have to start moving these asylum seekers to Rwanda. And all the time, more people are coming across the channel, making these illegal voyages across from France. And as you said in your introduction there, 838 just since Tuesday, 61 on Tuesday, when the weather conditions improved to the point they were borderline. So we got about uh, 61 across on, on Tuesday. On Wednesday, it was flat calm. And that's when we saw 514 of these people make that illegal voyage. And then yesterday, again, when the weather conditions were starting to deteriorate once more, 263 people made that journey across from France in small boats. And what do we have today? We have bad weather in the Channel today, and as a result, no boats coming across. Every time we hear from the government, we hear that the stop the boats plan is what's responsible for this 36% reduction in small boats coming across the English Channel uh, compared to the year before. Well, actually, every time we get an improvement in the weather, we see a surge. 
coming across the English Channel, uh, regardless of what the Stop the Boats plan is that the government has enacted. Yeah, Mark White, um, we're both smiling away. I think it's one of those situations now where we either laugh or we cry. Mark White, thank you very much for joining us on the show. Sometimes it might seem the best option. It's just, it's just for them to do a rain dance on the top of the White Cliffs of Dover because, as we said yesterday on the show, Chris Hope, um, we got that, that message out that they were cheering in the 1922 committee because they were told they could have an early cut for the weekend. Number 10 contacted us directly and that wasn't the case. They were cheering because it's been given royal assent, this Rwanda bill, but not until April the 18th. What kind of emergency takes a month to solve? If that was an emergency leak, the government would be up to their necks in water, perhaps an ample metaphor.